the highly overvalued. Mm. But that is, is something that we are yet to see uh, as we get closer mm. to the listing day. Mm. Now, depending on how it turns out, it could discourage mm. investors if the price um, you know, declines on, on day one. So that's also something to look after, look, at, look out for. Mm. The last two, quickly, is uh, technology, uh, technology advancement. Uh, a company like Airtel, which is a high growth company, must be able to keep up with the technologi technological advances mm. of the time. Mm. And it's a huge cost, it's an investment. Now that cost can affect profitability of the company. Mm. That's also something that uh, um, investors or Ugandan public need to understand. Lastly is uh, the, 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 the whole issue of competition. Mm. This market is run by two giants. Airtel and MTN, which are very close to each other. Mm. Now, that competition, depending on how it pans out, and if Airtel is able to keep up the competition, well and good. But competition can also put Airtel uh, on its you know, stores mm. all the time, mm. and it could also affect uh, prof profitability and revenue, revenue generation going forward. So those six... In, 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 interesting analysis, in, interesting insights. You see, Manoj, when, when, when all these are put out here, <laughs> high leverage, um, some of which is uh, nominated in foreign real estate, the chilling pressure still on you. Uh, does just give means to all, and what would you tell a Ugandan? Uh, yes, again, thank you for asking that question. Uh, you know, 100% mm. we have mitigants, we give all details on that. Mm. Let me come to the first point of uh, debt levels. Mm. We are at 1.3x uh, debt levels, mm. which is very, very, uh, it's, a, it's a very acceptable leverage in a technology industry. Mm. Uh, there are two significant factors there. One is most of our debt is in It's not at all. Because we uh, the balance sheet, high paid, high cash flow company, uh, we get uh, favorable terms for the interest also. So all these factors put together is what takes our leverage to 1.3x, which is very, very acceptable. It's very much below norms of 2 to 2.5 that this sort of industry has. So we are well <coughs> within our control limits. Second is uh, the point he talked about uh, technology and other factors. In fact, way back in 2019, we modernized our network. So you have seen our 5G launch. Mm. It happened very quickly because our network mm. is ready to accept future technologies and mm. any new technologies that come in uh, can be quickly absorbed without much additional capex or uh, any other related costs. Uh, the third thing that uh, uh, was indicated was, one of the risks was the free cash flow. I think this, uh, this company has, uh, it is in the prospectus, we have very good free cash flow. And uh, that's how you know, we are able to give 95% of dividends, uh, which is calculated on net profit or net retained earnings plus net profit, whichever is higher. Yeah, I, 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 and I think we shall have an expanded and more enhanced discussion about the dividend policy yes. because some market analysts have told us it is as aggressive as you want to yes. uh, by all definitions. But you, you see, you're not uh, a unique you know, uh, you know, player in listing. Uh, we've seen another teleco come out and list, and uh, its uh, subscription rate by listing day was at about 60%, meaning that 40% of the shares were not subscribed for. How are you doing it to ensure that you you, you make this IPO a success? Uh, see, the people who invest in our IPO uh, should, be, uh, should have one thing in mind. These stocks are for the long term. Mm. And uh, these stocks give very, very good returns <coughs> on dividend. So <coughs> over a longer period of time, the dividends are going to be, ex the dividends are already strong. You have mm. seen our dividend track record in the prospectus. And the dividend payouts in future will be extremely good. I see Uganda having a very, very high growth potential for the next one decade and uh, beyond. And so the dividends, uh, as per our projections, you know, we are showing a very healthy increase in dividend. The benefit a customer will get is uh, when he invests is in the long term. You should not, beyond an extent, depend on a short term investment in these uh, stocks. 
because these stocks over a longer period of time give very very high returns certainly you, you see you see M mumba here it comes here comes the bus queue you have seen another investment advisor a lead investment advisor on this you know face a 60 percent subscription by listing debt now you are the lead investment advisor on this how are you doing it from the financial sector to ensure that this comes out as a success with a hundred percent subscription uh, thanks, Hakim. I think for any IPO to, to be successful, I mean, you, you start out with a desire of it being successful. What, are, what is critical is information dissemination, and engagement such as this is one, one such factor. We've got an elaborate plan that uh, you know, was crafted by Airtel, which we are supporting them with. They have an elaborate marketing plan that is cutting across the country various forms of media, be it print, electronic, we have done Twitter and, and, and a number of various uh, you know, engagements. So from where we sit, the starting point is to say, do people understand what this transaction presents? Do they understand what you know, Airtel is all about? Do they understand how the transaction has been crafted? So from an advisory point of view, our role is to ensure that people have the information. And the information we insist on people having is by reading the IPO. It is a very elaborate document. It's a 325-page document that gives very detailed account of the entire transaction, from the transaction advisor, the council, the stockbrokers, and other you know, critical aspects relating to the entity, such as the management, the leadership, the experience, and the business model. So it's a very elaborate do uh, document. So from our perspective is to ensure that that information is disseminated. And what we are doing as a transaction advisor is to ensure that we point you know, potential investors in the company to the sources of that information. And in this particular case, other than you know, uh, Airtel themselves, their website has the detailed IPO. They also have an abridged version. An abridged version is basically a summarized version that speaks to the t key intricacies relating to the transaction. So when you, you know, embark on an exercise of this nature, you go in with optimism and make sure that you're in control of all factors that are within your control. And from where we sit, all factors within our control are ensuring that potential investors have all the relevant information that is required to enable them make an informed decision. And that is absolutely important. As you invest in stocks, be aware of all the factors, the risks and uh, you know, rewards that come with investing in a particular stock. And, 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 and I totally agree. But, but, but you see, Stephen, you, you, you have seen, you have been in this market for quite some time. You have seen some listings that have totally gone so bad and you've seen some that have succeeded totally. Other than just dissemination of information, having discussions and forums such as these, what are some of those other things that uh, companies, and maybe you could as well give us an expert analysis on how you think Airtel has been able to handle it and maybe how it could turn out, or it's still too late, or early? I, I, I'll say, uh, I'll put it this way, that, uh, and there are common characteristics for a successful IPO, which is general. Uh, one is preparation, uh, which Mumba uh, and Monaj uh, uh, touched on. Uh, the preparation has been uh, um, uh, done very well up to, to date. Uh, we are getting into the critical stage. This is, a, I would call it a home run. The last two weeks is actually when you get to know uh, what is likely to be the outturn. So preparation, but that has to be backed up by the full facts of what this company stands for. Now, when you look at, uh, and, and we normally look at two ratios, two ratios for companies like uh, Airtel. Mm. One is return on investment, on, on equity, mm. and which is ROE, mm. and then return on, on capital uh, uh, employed. Mm. Now, those ratios today mm. for Airtel mm. speak volumes. They're quite high ratios. Um, even when you look at uh, uh, mm. industry standards, mm. um, those ratios demonstrate how efficiently a company deploys capital mm. and how it's able to, to generate revenues. Mm. For Airtel, mm. it, it is, like I said earlier on, a high growth mm. underpinned by those two high ratios. Mm. It, it speaks mm. uh, of a positive, mm. very optimistic outlook mm. uh, going forward. So that drives confidence. Mm. 
Now, uh, the, the other issue when you look at the numbers, uh, a consistent uh, track record of profits. If you take it back four years uh, ago, um, 320 something billion, it dipped a bit when there was separation mm. between uh, uh, Airtel, Airtel, Airtel money, money and, and, and Airtel, Airtel. And dipped <laughs> a bit, but the projections <coughs> are quite, quite impressive. So for me, from where I sit, I see this as an appealing, appealing opportunity for Ugandans uh, to participate. Uh, and, and really, uh, it comes at the right time when the market has been down. So this will breathe uh, new fresh air. Mm. into the markets. And, and, and you just brought it up. I, 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 many people have actually been asking this, Manoj, and you will agree with me. Many Ugandans are wondering, why did you have to split? Why, didn't, uh, why aren't we seeing Airtel money as part of the same IPO? Why isn't it there? Because now you, you, it, 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 it touches a little bit on the numbers, which he has rightly alluded to that they dipped quite a little bit. Why isn't Airtel money part of the same offer? Okay, so uh, you know the history of Airtel. We started way back in 1995 as Celtel, yeah. and in 2010, uh, Airtel uh, bought over Zain Operations and launched Airtel brand in Uganda. In 2011, uh, we had formed uh, a separate company called Airtel Mobile Commerce Uganda Limited, way back in 2011, uh, as part of a long term strategy to be operator agnostic. Uh, as a fintech. So in 2021, uh, when we got the license uh, uh, for NPS separately from our telco license, uh, we formally separated these two businesses. Uh, and during that time, it's not only for Uganda, across Africa today, Airtel operates as two divisions. Yeah. One is the GSM division and one is the Airtel money division. We have two separate boards, two separate managing directors, yeah. right up to the whole core level. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with the IPO. Mm -hmm. We had decided as a company that we will have both the entities separate. We operate at arm's length. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we, we are listing only the GSM. Certainly. And, the, and the mandate was also to list the GSM mm -hmm. because we are governed by the UCC and the National Telecom License. Certainly. Um, l l let us now go to the fundamentals in banking, in the financial sector where certainly all this is going to play. Uh, Mumba, I've been looking at uh, some of the companies that ha that are listed on the Uganda Stock Exchange. With the way the market has been performing, um, how does it speak? Uh, what you know flavor does it carry to the timing of this IPO when the marketing fundamentals or when the market fundamentals are looking the way they are looking? Thanks, Akim. Um, and I, I think, the, like Stephen indicated, the timing is, is the right time. It is the right time to, to come to the market, especially as we get to the second half of the year, which historically, uh, from a business perspective, even posts stronger you know, performance than the first half of the year. So from that perspective, it is the right time. If you look at the uh, economic fundamentals as well, they are quite strong. They are showing a positive trajectory. Granted, there are risks in the environment, geopolitical risks, and uh, you know global risks that are happening that are impacting interest rates, FX rates, and the like. But over and above that, if you look at the fundamentals for Uganda relative to you know, sub-Saharan Africa and just the globe at large, you tend to see that there are positive matrices. We're just looking at the inflation numbers for September, which were printed headline inflation as coming at 2.7%. So from an economic perspective, the, the fundamentals are showing a positive trajectory. So that is a positive sign. When we look at the financial markets overall within an Ugandan perspective, I think they are stable. They are stable based on you know, the performance of the, uh, the, the economy, the regulation that is there. Manoj has mentioned to you that part of the reason that this is being done is to comply with regulations. Why are these regulations in place? They're in place to ensure that there is a deepening of capital markets. And this particular opportunity does contribute towards broadening or expanding the market capitalization of uh, listed entities. Thanks a lot, Mumba. And I actually think that is one of the figures that I reported out on Friday as uh, we saw the Uganda Bureau of Statistics actually announced that particular figure and we shall be returning shortly uh, to discuss what sort of flavor does this IPO carry on to the boss that has seen a reduction in the value of the listed companies plus the 
level of activity that is happening on the Ugandan post. All that and a little more to understand the difference between this and then the inflation. How do the both, uh, how do the two variables get to interface with one another and what is in for you as someone that wants to invest in Airtel Uganda? All that and more after the break. Uncle, you should see London. Oh, my boy. This has been five years. You should see Uganda. Thank you so much for keeping it NBS always. This is Business Perspective, a special investment edition. And I'm with experts from the telecommunications sector, the financial market sector, and the banking sector to discuss uh, the future of the Airtel initial public offering. Well, if you did not know, Airtel is listing at least or floating 8 billion of its shares, which represents about 20% of its shares to you, a Ugandan, to ensure that you own part of this company that has been part of Uganda's growth journey since 1995. As to whether that will bring a return on investment to you into your pockets is a discussion that we are having right now and take note of the things that are being said out by experts and shortly before we went for the break we we're still analyzing the market fundamentals that may determine what could be the return on investment and maybe the dividend a little later uh, Stephen, let us now discuss uh, the dividend policy. One of the most aggressive I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire business reportage. Speak about this dividend policy that Airtel is promising. I think the, um, it's, it's an incentive, uh, basically, because it's what drives uh, the motivation of investors to be attracted to an IPO. The expectation that the dividend will be quite large. That's a good thing because that's a sweetener that I think um, are the, the designers uh, or, or, or you know the people, the team that put together this IPO thought about to come out different from um, peer uh, uh, or competition uh, or any uh, se similar sector company that came, ca came on board a, a couple of years ago. So this is, uh, to me, I see it as a a positive uh, bullish uh, um, uh, development uh, and that's what uh, makes this IPO stand out uh, very very well. We, we are always told to look at these dividend policies before we get to list uh, in comparison with the market fundamentals. Do the market fundamentals get to validate that this sort of uh, dividend policy? But also I think mm -hmm. it's underpinned by the very optimistic, uh, mm -hmm. optimistic positive outlook uh, from a company fundamentals point of view. This is, like I said, a high growth company, very strong mm. fundamentals, consistent revenues. So all those projections speak to uh, this bullish, bullish stance uh, that um, Airtel uh, took to be able to, to, to come up with a dividend policy. Manoj, do you agree totally? Do you agree Absolutely. totally? Or there is something uh, th th that could have perhaps underpinned this sort of dividend policy from, from where you stand? No, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, we are very optimistic about Uganda's growth. Mm. Uh, we believe uh, the growth story in Uganda has just begun. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, if you really look at our fundamentals, it's very, very strong. Uh, we have uh, high operational efficiencies mm -hmm. and you know as uh, uh, I you know we keep talking to each other you know we stay hungry we stay humble and we stay frugal mm -hmm. it's all there in that uh, financial uh, statements that you can see so coupled with the fact that uh, you know we are very aggressive on uh, growth profit and share we also want to share the dividends to our investors uh, at, uh, high, at whatever stated in the prospectus because that's a reflection of how confident we are about uh, this market uh, and our growth prospects. And, 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 and your investment uh, lead advisor is just there seated listening to you speaking of a growth story. When I read through the IPO, what it essentially tells me is that Airtel has realized that uh, people have shunned the voice calls yeah, now they are heading into the world of data, and that is where their growth is certainly going to be projected. From where you stand as a lead investment advisor, Mumba, um, 
What is your brief comment about this growth strategy and where Airtel sees their side of the bread buttered? Uh, from where you stand, is this a very good growth strategy that you can buy into and you can therefore tell people that are banking with you at Absa to say, you know what, buy into this company. It is pointing to the right direction. So, so, so Hakim, uh, don't give me a, a role that I don't have. So I'm lead <laughs> transaction advisor to Airtel, and uh, I, I'm here to, to provide that support to Manoj and provide that perspective. But look, uh, putting it into perspective, um, th there is a saying that data is the new oil. And if you look critically into the financial statements of Airtel, you will see that progressively over the last four to five years, there has been an evolution of the income uh, uh, contribution between voice and data. You see an incremental uh, contribution of data, which is almost accounting for you know, 40% of the revenue streams of the company. So from my perspective and where I sit and what an investor should be looking at is to ask the question, is data relevant to the, the times that we're living in? And if the answer is yes, then it responds to any, you know, uh, deepening the understanding in terms of the relevance of this particular company or this IPO to the future of this uh, economy. So from the perspective of the financials, based on what has been presented and looked at by, you know, the reporting accountants, um, you would get a positive uh, vibe that it is headed in the right direction based on what we have seen historically and based on the strategic focus of the company that is saying that they will continue to invest in technology and data it being one of the growth streams that uh, you know they'll be targeting to drive certainly and uh, uh, from from where you stand Stephen, do you do you entirely agree because we are speaking of a country where the internet penetration levels haven't reached the ones that are desirable and government is just trying to you know the national uh, backbone infrastructure and all these, but all these can only weld up to about 50%. So we have others still away from this internet bracket. Yes, but um, I think, Hakim, when, when you look at uh, another dimension or a parameter uh, uh, in Airtel's uh, business uh, growth uh, trajectory, you see that in the last three years, uh, Airtel has grown, uh, has been the fastest growing telecom. Certainly. Even the subscriber growth has beaten the industry standard, the average industry standard. Mm. I think if I recall, um, if I can uh, recall the number, Monaj, it's about 8.3 against the 7 point something mm. um, average. So that's a very high growth. Mm. Then we are operating in an environment mm. where the demographics mm. uh, are quite interesting. Uh, these young people, Consume, uh, 16 percent, uh, 16 uh, years of age on average. Yes, mm. they all have uh, handsets. Mm. They are all connected. They speak. They speak more than you and I mm. and all of us here mm. because uh, th their business is to to consume. Mm. So that dividend, uh, I mean, I mean th that uh, um, um, de demographic <laughs> uh, demographic dividend <coughs> also speaks of. Uh, uh, growth prospects uh, going forward. So this market is, is, is getting larger and larger uh, by the day. Now, when you look at other fundamentals that are going to drive growth, mm. if we step aside and talk about economics, um, the economy is supposed to almost double mm. by 2028 20, when our oil, when we get our first oil. Mm. Now, that also changes the dynamics. Because the economic dynamics that really drive a consumption and demand. Mm. So, so going forward, mm. and I, going back to that op optimistic and positive outlook, mm. the business for the telecoms in this country mm. look very, very interesting. Certainly. Uh, Manoj, uh, as, as because our time is really fast spent, we need now to discuss. Now someone has been out there watching. We are having this big discussion about the Airtel IPO. What should they do? after here? Uh, I think, you know, uh, first of all, they should read the prospectus. There are two versions, an average version and an elaborate version. Uh, they should read the prospectus, understand our growth story, our financials, and then uh, th there are three ways they can invest. Uh, uh, th there is, uh, for retail customers, you know, you can invest via uh, Airtel, uh, uh, Airtel money. A second option is go to USC website and uh, uh, through the website you can invest. Third is 
uh, contact any authorized selling agents and uh, they will help them to uh, purchase Airtel shares. Mm -hmm. All right. Mumba, I do not have an account with, with, with ABSA, but certainly I'm interested in buying this share that goes for 100 shillings and I know I have some good money there. What do I do? So, Hakim, from uh, a receiving bank uh, perspective, lead receiving bank perspective, you are free to walk into any one of our banks since you rightfully said that uh, mm -hmm. uh, you are not uh, a customer of ABSA Bank. So you are free to walk into any one of our branches across the country. We have 39 branches that you can walk into and see any of our personal bankers who will be able to assist you in acquiring uh, these shares. If you are a customer, which I hope you will be soon, mm. you can use our internet platforms, uh, you, you can use our internet banking platforms, you can equally use our uh, you know, APSA mobile banking app, which all have the payment options for the subscription and registration for the shares. Certainly. Um, uh, Stephen, the, the, there's something that remains pending here, and, and it is a question that is quite, uh, you know, quite, quite, quite important to this discussion before we head into uh, the call to action which we've been doing. Uh, someone's saying, given the impressive statistics and consistent growth of Airtel Uganda over its 20 years, ex, uh, 28 years ex existence in the Ugandan market, also facilitated by market coverage of over 47% and the revenue share of close to 50% in the telecom communication industry as of today, do you feel confident that 100 shillings is the correctly valued price for this IPO based on the appropriate uh, valuation models by underwriters in order to strike a balance between profitability and affordability for an investor? Help us read into the valuation of this company. Like uh, I said earlier on, um, Akim, uh, an IPO price is not an exact science. Mm. Uh, the number of modeling mm. uh, work that goes behind uh, that number. Mm. Uh, clearly, based on what I, Airtel is now, mm. um, their revenues, operational e efficiency, projections uh, on prof profitability, mm. uh, return on equity, return on, on capital uh, employed, uh, all those ratios point upwards. So for me, um, in my own assessment, I take 100 shillings as a fair value um, of uh, this company at, at the moment. I, 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 I've done some modeling along with some financial market experts and they've told me that uh, the average you're looking at Ceteris Paribas, um, you're looking upwards of 11.5 shillings as a return uh, or as earnings per share. Do you agree with me? Or oh, this is a very conservative estimate? Definitely there's an upside. Mm. There's an upside to this IPO. Mm. There's an upside on, this, on the price. And I think as we get closer mm. to the D-Day, uh, that will play out, uh, quite frankly. So for me, the valuation of the company gives me enough confidence so. that the IPO is properly priced. Um, Manoj, um, I don't know whether my, 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 my people who did the modeling for me did it very well. 11.5 <coughs> shillings as earnings per share. Do you promise that of someone from uh, prospecting to buy yeah. into? Before that, let me tell you that there are good incentives for customers. Mm. The more you buy, mm. the more bonus shares you get. Mm. So uh, it is detailed in the prospectus. Mm. Uh, so uh, that also makes this uh, IPO very attractive, mm. the bonus shares that is uh, coming along with it, depending on the level of investment. As uh, we discussed, the fundamentals of this company are very mm. strong. Mm. And the fundamentals of Uganda as a market is very strong. So I don't see any reason why uh, all these projections that we have done mm. cannot be met. Mm. So certainly uh, the 11.5 shillings per, per, per 100 shillings will, will, will certainly come into it. And, and, and you say I'm looking at a figure of 326 billion as promised growth of assets through Airtel money and 5G technologies. Mumba, I, I know for a fact that uh, the banking sector right now is uh, buzzing with a lot of offers. What sort of offer and what sort of help are you giving away from the fact that someone can be able to march into the bank and then speak to you that I need to really subscribe for these shares and I understand that the lead uh, you know, broker on this is Crested Capital. How are you working with a lead broker to ensure that you can bring in as many people towards this particular offer? 
Uh, thanks, Hakim. Uh, part of our mandate is to ensure that, you know, there is data collation on the performance of the IPO. Mm -hmm. So the lead broker that uh, we are working on with uh, is Crescent Capital, as you have rightfully said. So we are in constant touch with them on a daily, weekly basis just to ensure that we're in conversation to track the performance of uh, this particular IPO and to support and answer any queries that may arise from any potential investors that are willing to invest in the IPO. So it's a, a close rela working relationship that we have with uh, you know, the, the leads uh, brokers and other you know, uh, brokers that are part of the, uh, or what we call them, authorized selling agents, as you would call them, mm. and also other participating receiving banks. But we are the lead bank in that uh, perspective. Certainly. Um, Stephen, uh, you, you typically handle these things because you have that view from the top. Let us speak about the regulatory space, and I think the, I hope I, we have this tiny little moment to, to, to us. You are regulated, <laughs> at least Stephen can comfortably comment on this. <clears throat> speak of the regulatory space, uh, the Capital Markets uh, Authority Act, because there have been some you know, uh, proposed amendments. Are we comfortable with the regulatory framework under which Airtel Uganda is listing? I think the regulatory framework is uh, appropriate for mm -hmm. the current uh, market um, dynamics. Uh, of course, uh, in, in, in markets, mm -hmm. one of the key things that uh, drives markets, markets actually walk ahead mm -hmm. or run ahead of regulation. Mm -hmm. So regulation always you know, comes, comes mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. So the approach the Uganda government has taken is uh, let the market evolve, regulation will come. So that is what is driving the amendments that, that you see. But quite frankly, the regulatory environment is, uh, is appropriate for the kind of market that we have now. Um, it will not be uh, uh, static, it will move, and as it evolves, regulation will, will, will catch up. Um, but again, I want to step back and, and, and speak to the Ugandan investment community. Uh, that this is an appealing, uh, this is an appealing opportunity. It's uh, an opportunity which provides diversification. There is one telecom already listed on the on the market. This is the second telecom. So I think Uganda should uh, take advantage. Um, in technical terms, um, how I would sum up this opportunity is a strong buy for Ugandans. I'm not here to mm. pitch for Airtel, <laughs> but from a <laughs> purely uh, professional uh, point of view that th this is a strong buy for Ugandans. So please participate. Certainly. Uh, your call to action, uh, Manoj, I know in around one minute because our time is really fast spent. What do you want to tell a Ugandan out there? They have heard and listened to you telling them to read the, the prospectus and they are going to do that after that. So I would, uh, uh, I would uh, want to communicate to all the Ugandans, all the uh, people who are watching uh, this show, that this is a great opportunity for you to invest. Uh, this is an opportunity to do diversify your investments. Uh, please uh, come and be part of our growth story. We have a very good track record, very sound fundamentals, and we are in an industry which is in, which is in the just the beginning of the growth phase in Uganda. Uh, a decade or two decades uh, in Uganda is going to be very, very high growth in telecom. Uh, so be part of this growth story and uh, be part of us. Certainly. Mumba, as a lead investment advisor on this, what do you want to tell a Ugandan out there that uh, has really watched this story religiously and has really listened to the words from Manoj and uh, Stephen? What would you want to tell that Ugandan? Sure, thank you. I think my parting words would be to say that, uh, you know, as lead receiving bank, should you want to receive more details or acquire shares in, in Airtel, please feel free to walk into any of the branches of APSA Bank, go to our online platforms, our mobile banking application, in order to be a participant in this IPO, whilst emphasizing what my colleagues have said, read the IPO so that you make an informed decision about investment uh, based on you know, the strong growth story and the returns that are proposed uh, from this uh, you know, particular uh, tel uh, cell tel com uh, uh, mobile company. Certainly. Stephen, you have helped me read through the systemic and non-systemic risks that 
this IP offices, and, 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 and I think you're the most free person here. <laughs> they are tied up a little bit <laughs> by the regulations. Help me, uh, tell me about those risks that I should, you have explained some of those. Um, others have not been able to look at the taxation regime and how it actually plays with this particular IPO. What are some of those things that I should base on? And when I look at that prospectus, what pages shouldn't I miss as an investor to read? when I'm preparing to buy or subscribe for shares in Airtel Uganda? I think there is always a disclaimer that uh, um, coming to invest is uh, um, make an assessment of all the risks, the potential risks, and I believe the prospectus has outlined uh, potential areas for any investor to look at. I pointed out uh, uh, six of them, and those uh, really touch on the financials, because that's... Uh, the revenues, the profitability, uh, the growth outlook. So valuation, risk is one key one, if, if I repeat. Liquidity, risk is another one. Uh, debt levels, I mean, debt is not bad. It is how you manage it. Any company has to borrow. And actually, a company that does not borrow may have an, an issue. Yeah. So, so um, uh, the MD and his team uh, must... Um, be able to mitigate those high debt levels and, and keep them in check. So those are the things that really an investor must be able to assess, uh, but have their own investment objective. Why do they want to buy Airtel, for example? So have an investment objective, know the time horizon, because you don't come in and out. If that's your objective, that's also another different matter. But for um, um, a stock like Airtel, one would think that you'll take a long-term view because of its long-term growth prospects. You come in for a long haul. Uh, that's how... 20 years. Well, it may not necessarily <laughs> be 20 it years, even but, 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 that. but it may not be mm. the kind of stock mm. for uh, I'll come in today, buy, mm. sell tomorrow. Okay. So you may have to prepare for yourself. Mm. Stay in longer. That's the time horizon. Then, then of course, the other major uh, element is, is uh, the, the, the whole aspect of diversification because mm -hmm. the, this gives you an opportunity to be able to diversify. You have uh, one stock of uh, a bank, one stock of uh, a brewery, one, two stocks of the telecom. So that's in portfolio management. We look at that as diversification mm -hmm. where you diversify your risk mm -hmm. as, as an investor. So again, to repeat that this is an appealing opportunity for Ugandans to be able to participate and, and share in the success and growth of these uh, companies. Let's not take, let the profits just uh, go uh, to the external shareholders. We should be shareholders locally here in the domestic market. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Manoj. Thank you so much, Stephen. And thank you so much, Mumba. Well, if you really want to look at this from a total or typical investor perspective, Airtel is promising you a very, very, uh, a very, uh, you know, appeasing dividend policy, and it is saying that it can give you 95 percent. You as an investor, you can actually look at this as uh, Christmas coming a little early, and it is it has been spoken about as one of those IPOs that are going to change action across the entire Ugandan stock exchange. To you, an um, old investor, the silver fox, uh, Samson Kasumba, think that you think you should know about this IPO and that the team should be able to absorb for you using all the available options. Well, Hakim, there's, there's quite a bunch that has, has to be known, and uh, I think that was a fantastic conversation, and I definitely uh, want to be part of that, given my age and where I am in life. I am looking for many alternatives of uh, making money, but uh, something... Wait a sec. Hello? Yeah, it, it definitely is... Yeah, yes, we are live, we are live. Yeah, you can catch us enough from mobile, yeah. Major story of the day? Yeah, it's still FDC things. I think they have a power meeting.